All righty, here we go. Welcome to the CNC with Dave Gatton Show. Got uh, kind of a full house tonight. Got my buddy Javi up there. Howdy, folks. Got Mr. Jim Senecola. Hi, folks. And my old buddy, Russ Beddows. Hi, everybody. How you doing, Russ? Glad you're here. Um, I'm going to do another one of the little Q&As, and I, but I do have some photos I want to show. Uh, actually, there was, uh, uh, I think I saw Greg Euler out there in the chat, and I had a couple of photos that he sent me uh, before last week, and I meant to show them. I was going to show them at the end of the show, and the next thing I know, I signed off, and I thought, uh-oh, I didn't show those, so I want to show those tonight. Um, so if y'all got any questions, just, uh, uh, put them in there. We'll get, uh, we'll get to them here in a little bit. Uh, but let me go, uh, let me go over here and get this picture queued up. Cause Greg sent me these last week. And I did not remember to show them, but I wanted to uh, show this project. And Greg, if you're out there in the chat, feel free to comment and let us know what's going on with these. But this is um, kind of a cool little uh, sign, I guess. Life is like a camera. Focus on what's important. Capture the good times. Develop from the negatives and if things don't work at turn out take another shot so i think that's uh that's pretty cool and also i there's no telling where that email is now where he sent these let me see if i can find it i think he's oh yeah there it is it says uh, here are a couple of pics of a project my wife, Wendy, created in VCAR Pro and I cut out on my Gatton. The edge holes are pocketed all the way through to make the board look like a film. This is a gift for a young photographer who is turning 18 and graduating high school during this quarantine time. All right, yeah, so I apologize, Greg. I meant to show these last week and I was gonna wait until the end of the show and just flat out forgot so anyhow and the other one is kind of the same thing but i guess it's or maybe it is the same thing it's just in a black and white uh picture i thought that was a pretty pretty cool project and i don't know uh, greg if you can put in the uh, in the chat here what the size of this is i'm trying to uh I'm guessing it's maybe, I don't know, 18 inches to 24 inches long, maybe. Looks like it might be long. Maybe, maybe it's not that big. I don't know. It looks bigger than that. Yeah, it looks, yeah, because I'm trying to gauge by the size of these other things, and I'm not sure what they are. These almost look like glass insulators. Yeah. Uh, th especially this one and this one over here. That's kind of what they remind me of. I don't know if that's what that is or not. But uh, yeah, that's what that looks like. But I don't know if that's what it is or not. But I like that. That's kind of cool. Okay, here he says it's uh, twenty-four by seven and a quarter. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, I'll tell you what, that man got an eye on him. Yep, glass <laughs> insulators. He says. All righty. Okay, well, thanks for sending me those, uh, Greg. And like I said, I apologize for forgetting to show them um, last week. But, uh, I, yeah, I invited Mr. Senecola on tonight because he sent me some pictures earlier today. <laughs> and I thought uh, if I'm going to show his pictures, I might as well have him on here so he can answer any questions about it. So if... Um, if nobody else has any questions over there, I'm not seeing any questions in the. No, nope, uh, haven't seen any yet. In the chat. 
and I will uh, I will move on to the other pictures. Okay, let's, uh, and I got these in the order we talked about, Jim, so. Okay. You can uh, just tell us what's going on with these. Okay. First, I want to show my GA, GI haircut. <laughs> Fresh today. <laughs> yeah, mine's, mine's two days old myself. Oh, shit. Well, when Life I was down in Alabama this uh, winter, I had lots of time to watch uh, tutorials. And uh, one of the tutorials that uh, I watched uh, was called the Magic Beans Coffee Sign. And that goes through a process of how to uh, build a, three, a 3D model and using a pitcher. So this was around St. Patty's Day. And I had designed this up, and I didn't cut it until I got back home in March. But uh, it's a uh, shamrock. And then the background around the bigger shamrock is made from uh, a pitcher. And in a spire, uh, and I want to say that this is all a spire work. It's not available in VCAR Pro. But uh, you can create a 3D background from a photo. And the background all the way around the bigger uh, shamrock is a picture of little shamrocks. And then I layered uh, on top of that some proud uh, lettering. Uh, and the lettering has draft on it, so it helped make a little bit stronger and have less tear out because this is pine. And I just sprayed this. So that's the very first one. Well, I, that came out really good, and it came out really really good considering you just said it's pine yeah <laughs> that's yeah. it's hard to get you know pine it'll be perfect except one little spot and it'll tear out or something so but that, you can uh, tell when it goes cross grain though because it, it it still roughs up you gotta do a lot of sanding on the, on the cross yeah grain stuff. yeah okay cool yeah. Uh, let's see uh, you know, no, how no, much no. Uh, draft did you add to the letters uh seven degree Seven degree. Okay. And on and on the uh, shamrock, I used uh, fifteen. Okay, yeah, it looks pretty healthy on on that, but I think it looks good that way. It, and it is also a dish, so I, I made it, dished it, and then put the letters on top, and then it's, all that. It's curved up. or or a flat dish. No, it's a curved dish. Oh, nice, nice. Don't see it. Doesn't look that way from this angle. That's so cool. In, in in like where the word "your" is, that's the lowest part. But it, it, it right. Was... Okay. Yeah. Very well. Very well done. All righty. I will move on to the next one. Now this was a, uh, a another sign, and uh, this one I. You know, I just like Orange Beach. We've been going down there several years. And this piece of pine actually had the grain in it that made it look like waves. And if you look at the texture in the back of this sign, it was a picture I took from our condo because uh, several days we had uh, waves six to eight feet coming in. And it was just gorgeous. So I took that picture and I used that picture to be the background around the shell. And again, I used the molding tool path to uh, do the uh, outside uh, rim. And then I just, uh, and it's, this has a slight dome to it. So it's higher in the shell area and lower at the ends of it. And uh, I just put in, the, again, the uh, lettering. And uh, it turned out pretty good, too. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. See, uh, how did you paint your your letters uh, without getting in on anything else? In some case, somebody doesn't know how to how to do that. I yeah. did it uh, <laughs> with a brush, guys. I was going to use my airbrush, but I was afraid to try it on it. So. I was wondering. <laughs> so I used the, I used the, a, a zero 
I wish I had a zero zero brush, but hey, it worked out okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks good. I I would I hate painting stuff. You know, I don't much like it one. either. I love it. My most favorite. And if I'm <laughs> using a good hardwood like walnut or cherry, and yet I don't paint that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. It, it's funny. I, I love painting. Well, I better love painting. I'm, I'm, I'm a painting contractor by trade, but I, I actually enjoy painting. It's very relaxing, yet I find it a sacrilege to paint, you know, these items that we do because I, I, you love to see the, the beauty and the grain. Stain is another issue, but paint, you, you're, you're covering up the grain. You're covering the uh the beauty of the wood and but the, the truly truly sad part is they sell better when they're painted to the average folks well on this sign for instance the grain of this pine was just gorgeous that is and it's see, gorgeous the waves these type of shells on the beach this is almost the color and the variation that you'll see on these sh uh shells between a light tan and a darker tan, uh, and I, I just didn't want to cover that up, right? Because that's almost exactly what a shell would look like on the beach. Yeah. Now, do you have any clear of any kind on this? Uh, yes, I have a helmsman. I put on it. Okay. Just in case I put it outside. Yeah. I did not draw the shell. That shell came from the. Uh, clip art that came with uh B or with uh, aspire mm -hmm. that looks good i like it yep keith painter wants to know did you draw the shell nope clip art <laughs> B -car or, or, or metric clip art okay all righty that one looks really good i like it Let's go to uh, the number three here. Okay, this is a, uh, I took a photo from a uh, coloring book that I have, and this is a pair of cardinals. And I lasered this with my three and a half watt ox laser. Uh, the size of this is about 10 by 10. And it took about, uh, I was running at 18 inches a minute at 100% power. It took about 45 minutes to do. Uh, I thought that turned out pretty good also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's got nice crisp lines, looks like. Yeah, the only thing is when I when I took the picture, there was a lot of overlaps. And I mean, there was a lot of cleanup. I think I spent two hours cleaning up a bunch of the stuff before I could actually laser it. But uh, yeah, that little ox laser. Did a good job for me. All right, cool. All righty, let's move on to the next one here. Okay, uh, this is a quarter horse uh, belt buckle that I made. There's a little rope uh, around there. It has a dome shape to it, and then there, the horse is a, again a quarter horse uh, clip art, and um, I just felt like making a belt buckle i'm looking at my belt buckles this is i could do something i can't do metal but i can do <laughs> i can do wood and uh tandy leather sells a little device that you can put on the back to attach to a belt and this is uh about three and a half inches wide and two and a half inches tall and it looks really good when i hold it up up to my belt <laughs> all right cool i like and that's that's all clip art that came with the spire, or did yes, or, yeah. yes, okay. yeah. You could even uh, bring in pictures of dogs or whatever you want to do and convert those to three uh, D. So you could you know have the picture of your dog on it if you want. Yeah. Mm. I've been given some thought to. Uh, yeah, I've been using VCar Pro for a long, long time. Uh -oh, First, go. it was four point six when I when I got it. So that's yeah. that's a, that was a long, long time ago, and I've been given some thought to get an Aspire, but I just 
I don't know. I just don't know if I, it's going to be, I mean, I know it's worth the money. There's, that's not a question in my mind, but I just don't know how much I would use the parts in Aspire that I don't have in VCar Pro. Uh, but every once in a while I get to doing something, I'm like, man, I could do that if I had Aspire. So, <laughs> oh, they have a nice thing with and Aspire. And that on Russ Meadows guy does some <laughs> fancy stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I need to get that so I can <laughs> be like Russ. It does <laughs> help. <laughs> well, when you get to be my age... <laughs> You learn a few things. Yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah, well, I know because you, you're way older than I am, Russ. So. Yeah, I know. A whole two months. <laughs> <laughs> All I right. Got you all done. If we don't have any, uh, any oh, questions. Nice. I'm the, I'm the kid in the crowd. This is awesome. Yeah, you're the baby. Uh, you're I'm, just, I'm the 54 year old baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, this is uh, a couple of pictures. Jim sent me in. Um, I definitely want to hear the story behind all this. Well, I saw a video from a guy who made a camera mount. And guess who? It's Dave. So I thought, <laughs> well, he put it on his Avid. And I says, I should be able to do something on my GAT and CNC. So I had this old uh, Samsung S7 uh, phone that I wasn't using. And so I took most everything off of it except for the camera and a, few, and a couple ops. And what I did is um, I really like organic shapes. And um, the shapes I used for the side was just basically a uh, French curve. Yeah, let me and go I, ahead and I, click this other picture so people can yeah, so you, you see there's a French curve. So what I did is it's made out of a 3 sixteenths birch ply. And when I did both uh, pieces, I took two pieces of the birch ply, put them together so I'd get exactly the same thing. So I cut them both at the same time. I just put uh, sticky tape, double-sided tape in between the two pieces. Then I opened them up. And if you look there at the back of my Z box, I have a little right block. Yes, yeah. sir. Right there, one on each side. And then I have two supports across the front. And it, it doesn't jiggle too much. The phone doesn't weigh that much. I made a, um, a hinge, a wooden hinge. So the camera is attached uh, through a um, a handheld, let's see, what is a selfie stick, you know, on, and on top of the selfie stick, it has had this uh, camera holder. Mm -hmm. And so I just, uh, and that uses a standard quarter 20, but I made the wooden hinge here and I attached it to the front of this. And I uh, posted a video out that uh, Dave posted for me. And it, the uh, router moves up and down. At first, I made a mistake, and I put I put that uh, second cross beam in there between the holes in the router, and I says, uh-oh, if the router goes up, it's going to break. So I had to move that out front, so now the router goes up and down. And it goes pretty smooth, and I, it allows me to take uh, better, more controlled videos of projects mm -hmm. that I do. Mm-hmm. I, th I think that's particularly nice, you know, for people that use their phone, because I don't know about it. It's hard to hold something, even though this isn't super heavy. It's hard to hold it completely steady. So when you take videos, you're, you're always moving just a little bit. And uh, I, I really like that. That's, that's a pretty neat idea. Yeah. it's uh, And since the battery on the phone... Uh, is not really reliable. I had to run the USB to the back and it, that hasn't been any real problem. So I, I ran it and you know, on the gat and you have that bottom bearing on there. I went outside of that and then I went underneath the gantry there so it wouldn't run over it. And, mm -hmm. And I just powered it from the back, and it works just fine. I can go 
you know, all the way to the left, and all the way to the right and front and forward on the full breadth of my uh, Gatton, which is a four by four. Yeah. I really like that. That's uh that's cool. Now, when you were talking about you double sided these together, did you cut that out on the CNC, the, the your side bracket pieces? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Sure did. Yeah, I wanted to use that because uh, I, I just didn't want the parts to move. So I used the double sided uh, carpet tape, which has a little bit more hold. And, uh, and when I went to pull it apart, it, it came apart okay. So, because each piece is fragile, if you just jerk it apart, you might break it. But with these braces in here, it, it does pretty good. So it's held like really in three places. So, mm -hmm. Lanny's in the house. He says, Dave, I use a gimbal when filming with my phone. It's great to remove shaking, etc. About a hundred bucks. Yeah, I should probably <laughs> get something like that. But I, usually if if I'm using my phone, it's just to shoot one of those like 10 to 20 second videos that you're going to post to, you know, Instagram or something, a little teaser video or something. But, um, but yeah. And Lainey, actually, I think you should build something like this for your uh, digital wood carver for your uh, instructional classes that would... Uh, would be nice. Sure, <laughs> little. Uh... <laughs> In other words, uh, lady, why don't you walk us through it? Because we're a little lazy this week. <laughs> <laughs> How, yeah, how's this done again? <laughs> well, no. Well, I just was watching Lainey's the other day. Uh, yeah, so was I. When he was doing the um, the dovetail thing, that was cool. And. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was switching cameras and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think how the digital wood carver looks. I guess you could put put one of those on there. I'm sure you could. I'm sure Laney could figure that out. So. He's, a, he's a regular we'll, Dusty we'll Lou watch, studio. We'll watch for that upcoming feature uh, <laughs> Laney, when that's going to be available. Okay. Darren Bird says... How do you connect up the terminal block from the AC power? It's just a USB cable with a plug, and I have a plug in the back of my CNC. I also have, it's the same way I have my uh, uh, laser. Dave, if you go back to the other picture, you can see my laser on the other side. So my laser would it sits right below and in here. Yes, sir. Right okay. near. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And I and I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that you use this setup when you filmed your challenge video. Is that correct? That is true. Uh, I thought so. Because I, I noticed when, when I saw your video, I'm like, yeah, somebody's got them a camera mount. <laughs> <laughs> you can always, cause they always tell because when you have the camera mounted where it doesn't go up and down like the, like the Z, it almost looks like you're using a hybrid CNC where the table's moving instead of the gantry. It kind of gives you that that feel you know because of the way the camera does kind of like a flyby and it's steady <laughs> yeah uh, let's see if we got any other questions uh, this doesn't move with the spindle it stays steady yeah tom peterson says i think a camera is better when stationary rather than moving with the spindle just me however yeah well, that, yeah, that's what this one will do. The camera doesn't move up and down. It, the the spindle will move up and down. Yeah. But not. So, yeah, I, I agree with Tom. However, there are the, there are the shots where, where, like you have, Dave, you have the the camera mounted on the spindle because you want to see the table move and the router steady. Yeah, that's what I mean. With the the the, the, the it's not really a bad thing, but when you have it, the camera 
like this where it's not moving even though your gantry's moving it makes it look like the table's moving and not you know like you have a fixed gantry yep uh it gives that uh illusion i guess you'd call it but yeah all right harry's yeah harry says his cnc is a hybrid so it's yeah it's where you have a fixed gantry and the the z goes up and down the x goes back and forth across but the y the table moves in and out um what's what's the uh what's what's the hybrid with the brick called again Dave, the, oh, the brick. The, oh, you talking about the uh, Maslow thing? <laughs> I wouldn't call that a hybrid. I'm, I'm not even going to say what I call. More, more, more like a mutant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry if anybody out there's got one of those. I'm yeah. just not a fan. If you do, don't worry. We'll continue to make fun of you. Yeah. yeah I, just, <laughs> I just can't get over the brick thing, you know. So. So sad. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, all right. Well, I guess uh, we're. Anybody got any questions on the the camera mount thing? Or that's all the pictures I had, and um, we'll uh, just take whatever questions anybody has. If anybody's got any, if not, we'll wrap this up and call it a night. Well, that's a pretty quick one. Come on, folks. Yeah. Oh, they'll ask. <laughs> They're all trying to go, what can I say? What can I say? Okay, Harry says his X moves. Yeah, I guess you could make it either the X or the Y, depending on how you wanna how you wanna configure it. But uh all righty. Well thanks for uh, sending me those pictures, Jim. And thanks for coming on to uh yeah, the other nice thing is since this uh, camera I used the, uh, from a selfie mount, it has a capability to click a picture while the camera is there, too, so you can get a still shot. So somebody said they can do stills. It could be moving, and I can take a still shot just by pushing the button. It works really good. Yeah. Cool. Now, are you? Have you tried filming anything with that setup while using your laser or just uh, around or so far? No, because when you look through the camera, I mean, you just see the light. You have to have that red lens in front of the camera lens or you just see a blinding light. <laughs> I tried it. Oh, okay. It, it, it's just so bright. I mean, it's the brightest blue and it just is overpowering. But if you hold the that red glass in front of it. Yeah, those sexy red glasses. And it makes the laser beam just about invisible, but you can see it just a little bit. Okay, all right. All righty, well, let's see. Uh, Laney's got a question here, I think. It says, do your controllers have a way to view a camera in setting X and Y. Do your controllers have a way to view a camera? I'm not, when you say your controller, whose controllers are you talking about? Because I don't really have a controller. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have one on my machine, but it's, you know, I do, and the answer is yes, but <laughs> um, well, I'm talking about the hobby box. Oh, I see. I know what I know what he's talking about now. He camera uses, angles? A, he uses a camera with a crosshair that he can use to set the X and the Y. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, okay, so he gotcha. could go to the corner of a board, and it yeah. has a camera yeah. with a, a crosshair. Oh yeah, it, and he can move it right over that spot and set that. Yeah, if you're talking about that, I've got the the Hobby Box has a laser uh, attachment. Well, soon to be laser attachment that that you can do that with, uh, but not a camera. I I prefer the laser ever since because uh, it it came stock on my Cam Master, and ever since I I've been spoiled. I prefer the laser crosshair for X and Y as opposed to one of those uh, uh, all-purpose plates or whatever they call them, the X Y Z plates. Um, 
uh, the the touch plate is fantastic and the and and the best way for Z. But uh, when it comes to setting an X, I mean, uh, you could pinpoint exactly where you want it, whether it's a dot on the on uh, on a circle or whether it's a crosshair. And the beautiful thing about the crosshairs is that sometimes I've wanted to find um, a a point, let's say you have a circle and you want to find the X. <clears throat> this mic is too close. The X, the, the zero, zero of that circle. And, you know, obviously you could take a square and then draw the lines out. But with the, the beautiful thing with the, uh, with the um, crosshairs is you'll go to one, so one end, uh, one tip of the circle, the X tip, for instance, of the circle. And you can you know, memorize or whatever, whatever that, that direction is. And then you can go to the Y of the, of the circle. But if it, if the circle's small enough, the crosshairs are long enough where you can actually just move the crosshairs over and you'll see the lines crossing the, uh, the X and the Y and a lot of different uses. The camera is also fantastic. I mean, that's. Well, Laney mentions uh, Mach 3 or others. And this might be what he's talking about, because in Mach 3, there's a, a a thing where it says plug-in control. You can drop that down. It says video window. It says set, start camera, stop camera. That might be what he's talking about. And I've never, I've never even used any of that stuff. I'd have to go read the old Mach 3 manual to... Yeah, could you? Because you could easily. I mean, that's a that's a. I mean, Laney just gave me an idea. That I didn't even think about. You can actually mount a small, uh, and I'm sure this is maybe what he's talking about, and maybe yeah. they've done it before. But well, I'm thinking you could. I could easily mount uh like just like a laser. You could mount a small, uh, fixed camera, and you could determine. You could uh, you know with with some sort of. Uh, software crosshairs right in the in the lens built into the lens and uh and the same same as same concept as the as the laser you the mach 3 script will know exactly how far away x and y it is the distance to the center of the router so all you got to do is position that camera like you do the, the the laser crosshairs over where you want the beautiful thing is with the camera you can you can get a big, huge. Uh, you can amplify the 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 piece and and uh, and look at it on a screen. And once you see exactly where you want your X and Y, click a button and it it sets it on it's it sets X zero Y zero exactly to that point. Well, well, one, of the things, one of the things that I use with my laser is I use an offset. <clears throat> so every time I do a vectric. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, with my uh, ox laser, I have the offset set in there. So once right. I set it with my uh, V-bet, then I hit go, the laser point will come exactly to where the V-bet was. What, what you got to think about doing is, um, well, do you have your ox laser mounted all the time on your, on your machine? Yes, I do. Well, what you got to think about doing little, is I put a little cover over it. So, so do the what I'm talking about with the crosshairs is basically like your ox laser doing the opposite. You put the the ox hairs point the 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 laser point wherever you want your your zero zero, and then that way you can do the offset for your router. And the reason that's a, I mean that that I prefer it that way because a crosshair or a camera amplified, whichever way you want to look at it, is very, very precise compared to, oh, I got to swap the bit to a V-bit because I need a point. Oh, that V-bit is not exactly, it's an optical illusion. It may not be perfect. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously it's close enough for wood, but but um, but it, let's say you've already got a, a half inch um, end mill on there or a bowl bit or something, but you want center. I mean that's that's uh, the, the you know the laser's the way to go. You don't have to be swapping bits or anything like that. It's all one button. Yeah, I think the lady said, "Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, David." I think if I 
let me close this up again. If you come right here, it says video window. This is what pops up. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, I've never fooled around with that. I've never really had a reason to, but I uh, maybe I can read up on it. Or if somebody, if somebody uses that and wants to come on the show and demonstrate, yep. uh, <laughs> be glad to have you. But um, yeah, I think, you know, I just don't know how, um, I mean, I'm sure it's there for a reason for people to yeah. use. But I mean, with with you know, touch plates and uh, yeah, Laney says in the software and all that stuff. Now I don't know that it would be that useful. Yeah, Laney says in the software you 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 set the offset. Um, I'm I'm I, I guess I I was I learned I never learned that part of the software, which is the beautiful thing about Laney's class. You learn a lot even when you've been doing this for years, because you take so many of the details for granted. I've always done it with a script, but uh, yeah, I didn't even know they had it in the software. That's a beautiful thing. Well, you know, I've figured out the, the distance. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I keep it wrote down out there. Yep. And from my, from my laser to the router bit, so I don't have to, when I'm setting my zero, I can set my zero with the router bit, you know, a V bit or something. Mm -hmm. And then I know the offset. And, and if, since I know it ahead of time, I can program it that way in VCAR Pro. And that way I just, when I'm at the machine, I just find the zero with the router bit and hit go and it moves to the laser, to the right position. But... And I'm not doing any production work, so this works fine for me. So, yeah, now, I don't, yeah. well, not many of us are doing production work. Now, Todd mentioned something that 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 is a very valid point, as far as uh, <clears throat> uh, Todd HCNC said. I think dust might be an issue with the camera. It is. I always have a. Uh, a I'm not speaking about the camera, of course. I'm speaking about the uh, laser pointer, but it's the same thing. It's basically a lens, and dust. Uh, you know, unless you always have your dust collection system, and even then, uh, every now and then, I forget to turn it on or something, the dust builds up, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm looking for my laser, and I, I turn it on, I turn it on, what's wrong? The first few times this happened, I, I didn't know, I thought the laser was broken, and all it was, was uh, I took a little uh, can of dust off, and all of a sudden, the laser was bright as day, I didn't realize that over time, the dust had been accumulating on the lens, as it does. So, yeah, that's just something practical. Always have a little uh, can of dust off for your uh, <laughs> for, 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 if you if, when you do that. Hey, Dave, I had another question that scrolled by, but uh, okay. they asked when I was using my ox laser, do I have my uh, a dust collection on? I do not uh, do my dust collection. Uh, I have a little bathroom off my CNC area, and if it gets where I can smell a little bit of, uh, you know, like burning wood, but not very much, but uh, I'll just turn the vent fan on. It takes care of it. I don't want to suck a hot ember into my uh, dustbin. Right. Yeah. I'm. You know, I run my JTEC out there in my shop a lot. And I guess I've just got used to the smell because I won't even smell it. And then I, if I walk outside the shop and come back in, that's when you go, oh, it's you can smell something's burning in here. But I just I guess I've just gotten used to it and it doesn't get it's not that strong. So yeah, you, you're a lot worse than that. So. You're, you, you've got a very good point, uh, uh, Jim, with the uh, with with when when running the laser. I mean, I I have never. I never really considered that because I've never had a laser on a router. I've always had an independent uh, uh, laser engraver, and the laser engraver has been the the uh, the vacuum system for that is through a, a, a three stage carbon filter and and the works, and it's all complete metal enclosure. I mean, with a fumarester in the beginning, so so it's it's a fume extractor. It's not a dust collector. And uh, 
I and you're absolutely right. If you you, I, <laughs> speaking as a person who's who's caught his laser on fire, I would definitely not take a chance with a dust collector personally. Uh, uh, with a running it uh, with with the laser on. Well, that's like getting a dust explosion in a, uh, yeah. we, you know, where they do corn and all that kind of stuff. Silo. Yep. Yeah, in the silos. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You can have a real popper. All righty. I don't see, uh, I don't have many questions tonight. I guess we'll wrap up early. Yeah. Todd, um, was, Todd was saying, I like the DeWalt style. It's just an LED shadow line. Yep. I, is the DeWalt is a, a shadow line. That's when you have two LEDs and you got the shadow of the actual uh, blade in the middle, or or is it one LED right in the middle? I'm just curious. Uh, he was talking up here about his uh, the laser on his chop saw. Right. So is it my, is my it, laser went on went out on mine right after right after I got it <laughs> it worked for a couple of cuts and after that it quit well they sell they sell the little uh they they sell those uh centrifugal force lasers that you actually attach to the uh to the to the center of the you, you put it in the nut and it actually spins with the laser and and it only lights while the laser spinning which is you know pretty cool those uh those poor man, poor man, laser, laser lights. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, I guess we're going to uh, wrap this one up. If nobody else has any questions. Um, Y'all better get your oh, questions in. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not ready to go yet. I, I knew, I kept sitting here thinking there's something else. I've You've seen. got something else. And I know what it is. And I know why I haven't remembered because I don't see him out there in the chat. But let me uh, let me show this. Let me. And this is where I, every time I have to do this, it makes me mad that StreamYard has not got a more options on this layout so i got this in the mail the other day and i haven't even opened it it is from mark allen up there in minnesota and he sent this and he he said that he was going to make something and donate it as a prize for the challenge so i'm going to open this up right now we'll see see what it is who was it that said this? Mark Allen. Mark Allen. Got it. And I don't believe, I haven't seen, he might be out there, but I haven't seen him. I don't remember I seeing that's anything. Why I, was free. I, had this, I had it moved and sitting right here beside me so I wouldn't forget. And you know me, I'm pretty forgetful these days. Got my 1982 scissors here. I don't know how sharp they are. Get it open without, without cutting myself. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. I think it'll slide out. All right, can anybody tell what it is so far? <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> a big one. Let's see here. It's very well wrapped. Or a very beautiful piece of wood. <clears throat> Let's see if it's carved or not carved. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Brrr. Drum roll. The box was the present. You ruined it. <laughs> All right. Come on. Box in a box. That's what it is. Box in a box. Oh, yeah. Check this out, you guys. Check this out. Oh, oh. cribbage. Look at that. Nice cribbage board. Is that not cool? 
And look back here. He's got, uh, I don't know, that looks like it may be rubber stamped with his uh, company name and stuff. But let me show you the back, too, because he's got the little play pieces. And of course, oh, very I, nice. Yeah, I like that. Move this. I don't want to put them up. Yeah, yeah. Help them out on a desk here. That's very nice. Yeah. That is cool. That's very nice. Very nice. Yeah. I like that. And I'm especially digging the good morning with the coffee thing on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, I find that hilarious. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm kind of regretting now that I didn't already open this and, and just keep it for myself. But There you go. I'm telling yeah. you. But that's uh, okay, Mark. Time to send Dave another one. That's uh, that is really quick. <laughs> I am digging that. I think Thank it's time to Walker. have him on the show. I don't think he's out there, uh, but uh, if he's watching later, thank you very much, Mark. I'm sure somebody will uh, be happy to get that. This that's just cool. That is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. that is cool. All Whoever right. wins is going to have to learn how to play cribbage. Yeah, I don't even uh, don't think I've ever played cribbage. And it, it's not it's that's not something you can play by yourself, right? Like solitaire, because I doubt if I can get Jack and Rocky to. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is it sounds. All I know is it sounds way too much like cabbage. So I know I'm not going to like it. <laughs> yeah, I would like it, Daniel. I like cabbage. <laughs> all right well yeah i don't see mark out there but uh oh. mark if you're watching this later thank you so much that was that was pretty cool i like that so there were a couple questions that came in up higher i can't remember what they were okay let's see if i can you remember who asked them uh let's see Uh, uh, Earl Walker. Okay, this one. I have the old Xylotex single parallel port box. My goal is to have limit switches, triple edge, touch plate, MGB pendant. What screen sets do I need for Mach 3 and what is a good Bob? Any of the Bobs they're a bob's a bob they're all bob's about the same. and any screen set set should work it's not so much the screen set it's the script that you use with the screen set that makes things happen so the one that most people had used for that triple edge uh touch was the big text screen set and it's no longer available and it will yeah, never be coming back people are don't i think don't, some of them don't understand you you know it's the script that you add right. that makes it work it's not so much the screen set i well, know that guy had it customized just for that and all but yeah uh, bill griggs uh answered somebody's question because they had asked me and i said i you i had seen the uh the big text and he said that it's not available so this fella contacted bill griggs and he said uh there's another one on there that works just fine with it, with the, uh, the, the three-way touch plate that he has. Triple yeah. H binder. Let, let me uh, I just I can't remember that. the name of it, uh, actually. A Trinity or, or, or something like that screen set. I can't remember for sure what it was. I went and looked at it. It looks pretty cool. Let me... Um, I think I can show everybody with it. Let me see if I can get this thing to get to the full screen. I don't know why that stupid thing never wants to open up the full size. Let's see if it did that. No, nope, still didn't do it. Ah. All right, I'm going to get it if it kills me. While you're looking, Keith Painter's got a question about lasers. Okay. Can he says, you, Do you set the laser level in VCARB or is it set through Mach 3? The, the power level? I'm assuming that's what he means. Uh, I do mine through Mach 3.
if you if you have it set up you know there's different ways to do a laser some people have it where they just have just have it turn it on and off and yep. and that's fine but when you do it that way it's always on it Full power. Yeah, it's full power or not. And then you've got another way where you can control it through the PWM and uh, uh, pulse width modulation. And uh, basically, you graduate the uh, the yeah, power. That's, that's how I do mine. Yep. That's the best uh, way. That's, I still, this thing's still not open. All right. But anyway, let me. Uh, I'm trying to get it bigger just so I can read it. Okay. This one doesn't have one in here, but it'll still work for me to show you what I'm talking about. Um, this is what I'm talking about with the, the script. Like if somebody's trying to add that auto tool zero, mm -hmm. you know, a touch plate or a triple H finder or whatever, this is how it works here. And this one, because it's in here on this office computer, you come to, um, Oh, I got to reset that. Come here to operator and come down here to ed edit button script. And when you do that, you see these different buttons. Some of them are flashing. So if you go to the auto tool zero and click on that, it opens up this. Whoops. Where'd my nuts? Okay. It opens up this. And this has got the, the script in it. Well, this one doesn't have one because I don't obviously don't have this hooked up to a machine in here. But um, that's um, that's how you do it. So it's what it's the script you put in here is what makes all that happen. It doesn't really matter what the screen set is, is, my, mm -hmm. is the point I'm trying to make. Hey, Dave, I think, don't you have posted uh, Steve's uh, auto tool th thing somewhere? I thought at one time you had posted that. Yeah, I don't know where, where it's at, but it's that Steve, I don't even know his last name, Steve from the Guru Brew guy. Yeah. Uh, he's I have the a one copy here. of it on my computer. Um, I, prob I probably got it on this computer somewhere, but I don't know where it's at. But, um he's the one where he had did a video and then he had a script and I don't know where he got it or if he wrote it or what, but, uh, he had a link to it and it works fine. You know, now the one he's got is just for a touch plate. It doesn't do the, uh, doesn't do the X and Y corner finding. It just does the touch plate. But, um, I've got half a dozen in my files, all different sorts. They're, they're, they're everywhere across the internet. And Mark Lindsay yeah. uh, had a uh, point too about uh, modifying Mach three screen sets at eight fifty one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mark. Yeah, he's talking about a three way touch plate. Let me just give you an example, and and you can do what what he's talking about, but. The Avid CNC uses a corner finder, but I still use this button. But they have a script that they wrote that has all that figured in. So in other words, when you go and you click Auto Tool Zero, there's a little window pops up, and it says, "What do you want to?" You know, I, I don't. I haven't really read it that close because I've done it so much I don't pay attention to what it says. But it'll come up and say something like. You know, do you want you want to zero just the Z? And if you click OK, which is what I always do, I don't even look at it. I just hit hit the button and hit OK. And it will come down and do the Z. If you tell it you want to do the X and the Y, and you also tell it which corner you're doing, mm -hmm. and then it will it will do the Z first and then it will come over. And if you've got a let's say you got a quarter inch up spiral end mill, you know, the end mills they're, you know, they're, they're different the way you have it turned. So you need to have it turned so that you're at the widest part and their, their script will, you know, you turn it one way and it'll come over and touch this. And then it pauses for you to turn the bit 
to put the widest part the other way, 90 degrees from the way you just had it, and then you hit it again. So it, all that happens in yep. just regular Mach 3. It's and, no special screen set. It's all the script is what. And, and be careful which, remember, which script you have and which touch plate you have. Because some versions of the triple finder touch plate are where you have two edges and and the script touches uh, goes down x uh, sorry down x touches it down y touches it and that's how it figures it out there's another version that has a hole and it'll go left uh, x minus x plus y minus y plus and find the middle that way so so remember there depending on which edge finder you have and some scripts uh, uh, have the capability of doing both. There's a few notes here uh, from Jerry Brown. He says the Triquestra has a script that came with the CD on it. And, and, and Paul just emailed you a script, uh, Paul Stewart. Okay. I have not got the email yet, but let me click here, see if I can get it. <laughs> Yeah, like like I said, there's a bunch of different ways, and you do like Javi just said, you got to know uh, the 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 really. I'll have to do a show where I show the, or or at least do a video mm -hmm. where I show the the setup that Avid has because it's it's really cool. But you can use both sides if you're going to use just the Z only. You use one side of that block. And you have these two little ridges that catch the corner sticking up. If you're going to put it on the corner, you flip it over the other way. And those two little ridges catch the corner. And then when you tell it, when you hit the button and you're telling it the X and Z, you need to tell it which corner you're on. Because if you're in the lower left, you want you don't want the X to come over and touch this side because it's going to push it off of the corner. Right. It's going to come over and hit this side to keep it tight against the corner of the board. And the same thing with the Y. It's not going to come here and push it off. It's going to go this way and touch that side. And for all, all these reasons. All that's in the script. So, you know. It, and, it, and, and for all these reasons and more, I prefer a laser crosshair, which hopefully soon will be available within two weeks. So stay tuned to your local Gatton channel because <laughs> I'll be announcing it here. <clears throat> okay. I see everybody's saying they're going to email me. Their script. Oh, yeah. I don't need scripts guys. Yeah. Uh, I have, I have the, the one simple one from Steve at guru brew that I use on my Gatton because I only use that little homemade piece of angle. I use as a touch plate. And then on the um, Avid, it you know I bought that option. And, and Tom says also, Dave, you could purchase the Avid touch plate that is very good and use on a Gatton or any other machine. Absolutely, you could, and you can. In fact, I I think uh, you can go to the Avid website and download that script. You can I have all that stuff on there, whether you, you know, but you got to remember it works best with their touch plate because it's got, it's, it's, it's got a, a hole in the middle strip, you know? Yeah. It's the one with the hole in the middle. No, not, no, not. No? Oh, the, oh, the triple edge finder is the, from Bill Griggs is the one with the hole in the middle. Uh, yeah. I, one of those are, I don't know which one's which, but yeah, yeah this one's the, um, uh, but I really liked it, and I'm sure one day I'm going to get around to where I'll put it on the corner and do all that. But for most of the stuff I run, since it's inside a skeleton, which means it has a border all the way around it, it doesn't matter. So I always just mark the center of the board and get it relatively close, at least as close <laughs> as these old eyes can see. And that's all that matters. It's, it's, you know, as long as you don't cut outside the, the blank, you're good. So, yes, Todd, you have to set the plate thickness in the script. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you get the uh, the avid thing, 
and use their script, it'll probably be right because I was thinking that I might have, you know, I thought, surely how are they going to make all these exactly the same? But I have never adjusted mine. It's dead on. From and, and another nice thing about the Avid one that I'll mention is no matter which side you're using, whether you're using just the side with the Z or you flip it over and you use any other side that has the, the little corner thing, it is all built on a spring. So if, for example, and it has the, the other little wires, has a little magnet so you can stick it onto the, I usually stick mine on the collet nut instead of the bit but for some reason if it doesn't if you're trying to set the z and you see it come down and you see it start to compress that spring you have time to stop it before it does any damage like say you forgot to put the magnet on there or you stick it somewhere that you thought was good continuity and it's not so it uh you do have that few seconds <laughs> built in because it's on a spring where you can uh, where you can cut it off. Mark, it might be um, says I see the top. I guess I could try to pull that up if anybody wants to see it. Let's see if I can go find it on there. Find it on their uh, website here. See, just when we think we were going to get out of here early, and now we are, it's after <laughs> just over an hour, but that's good. We're all right. We're all right. Let's see. There it is. Uh, of course, I'm going to need my glasses for this. I mean. Because I don't know what they've got it under. Might be in here. Ah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, share the screen. This is what I'm talking about. It's it's uh, and actually this is an old picture because they're showing like some kind of an alligator clip right there, and they don't have that anymore. They have a little magnet, um, which makes it super nice. But this is the side that you can see that this little L shape here that sticks up. So if you're running it like this on top, that's down on the blow. So that would hook on your material if you're trying to do a corner. And if you're trying to do just the Z, you would set it on the material or on the machine bed like this, and it would just touch up on the Z right here. But you can see it says right here, our touch plate also includes a brass spring loaded contact pad on both sides so it makes it really nice like i said because if you uh if you forget to put the little magnet on there or for some reason it's not making good contact it will uh, give you a spring <laughs> Now, Teresa, we said hello. <laughs> uh, All 130 of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Michael says you can add an LED to the Mach 3 screen for testing touch plate continuity before you use it. Yep. Okay. Well, Mach 3 already has that. And I will show again in the diagnostic screen. You mean? Yep. Uh, yeah, he's he's saying you can actually stick one on any screen, which is pretty cool. Yeah, but I mean, if you, oh, yeah. if you do it, it, it'll already light up here. So yep, yep. Yeah. You, you might can want test to. it without having to add anything. But if you wanted to put it on your main screen or something, that I get that. But, um, but it already has a way to. Diagnose everything. That's why they call it the diagnostic screen. <laughs> I'm, I'm just guessing. <laughs> but uh, all righty. 
PNG Woodwork says Avid has all the Mach 3 settings too. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't talk about my Avid much because most people don't ask me about that. They're about that. They're asking me about the other machine, but but Avid has when you go to their website, whatever type of machine you get, you you whether it's a two by four or, or a, uh, you know one of the bench tops or w whatever it is, they have all the settings where you can download the XML file, load it in, and go. You don't you don't change anything. But you do when you go to download. You have to make sure that you select like if you say, okay, I've got this size machine. And then they'll say, okay, well, what, what size steppers do you have? Do you have the 23s or the 34? So you select that and any other options. But whatever you say that you got, you can download the exact XML file for it. And it works fine. And, of course, they try to, uh, you know, they kind of push Mach 4. Um and, you know, like when they were giving me my quote, they, they put that in there. I said, no, nah, I don't need, I don't need that. I'm a long time Mach 3 user. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, mm -hmm. but everything I've been using the Mach 3 and everything works, works fine with it. Yeah. Mark's, yeah. Point out that, yeah, you can add the LED next to the auto tool zero button. Yeah. Yeah, very convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just letting you know that it's not like there's no way to tell by the default thing. It's there if you want to look at it. So, all right, well we've been here about a little over an hour. Was there any other questions? Um, don't see any. Mark says he calls it the sanity check. I, what I do, Mark, is I, I don't do it probably every single time, but most of the time when I'm using my GAT, because all it is is that piece of aluminum, you know, and an alligator clip, just to make sure I usually pop over to the diagnostic screen, touch it and go, okay, it's good. And then pop back and then run it because, yeah, you know, there's no safety spring when I'm set, especially with that rotary axis, when I'm setting the z i use the top of that tailstock block with the aluminum plate setting on it mm -hmm. you know there's no give in that so yeah it's it's very different if you if you're using the alligator clip as opposed to if you have hardwired your probe um let's say you've taken that wire that leads to the alligator clip and you've actually uh you know put a set screw or somewhere on your that you know works that's that's a different story but if if you're if if you're putting that on the bit every time that 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 i would i would definitely uh test it just in case yeah now i haven't i haven't tested it on the avid but uh i do on my i see and the reason i don't test it on the avid is because it does have that spring feature right so you've got a little bit of you know you know whether it's not going to work or not but on my gat and especially now that i'm running a lot of rotary axis stuff and i'm putting it right on the top of that block of the tailstock uh i want to make sure it's working and mine i don't put mine on the bed i haven't there's a bolt on the uh the bracket that holds the the or the mount rather that holds the spindle mm-hmm you know, the one where you turn to that spreads it open. Yeah. That spare bolt. That's what I stick mine on. Yep. Yep. And that's why I usually will go to the diagnostic thing and check to make sure it is working before I hit that button and start it coming down. Yeah. I think the second or third time that I used my GAT and CNC with a touch plate, I put the, I had a Porter cable 690 and put the clip on the bit. Came down, zeroed up, took the plate out, forgot to take the alligator clip off the <laughs> bit, turned the router on, and and it just pulled all the wiring right out and wrapped around that thing. Oh yeah. So I learned a lesson. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use the alligator clip anymore because I have a Hitachi and it it has continuity all the way through the router. Yep. Yep. You don't with, need that. Same with our spindles. Yeah. 
You learned a good, valuable lesson. Keep a lot of wire and extra alligator bits, uh, alligator <laughs> clips around. <laughs> yeah. It happens so fast, you never know what hit you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, somebody was asking about the thing, and Mark pointed out that Peter Pesuelo or CNC Nuts has a video on how to add that. Uh, I think he, well, probably how to add pretty much anything you want in Mach 3, but but that yeah. little LED thing or whatever that everybody was talking about. Yeah, also uh, later, uh, Dean mentioned, not Dean, who was it? Uh, da, 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 Brian uh, Mumi mentioned that uh, Peter also has how to switch Mach 3 screens and, and stuff like that. Peter's got tons of videos on 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 all that uh, yeah. all those customizable setups and stuff and it's fun, it's kind of funny that that brian wrote it just like peter says it because he doesn't say mach 3 he says mac 3. mac mac, mac 3. 3. 3 i saw that too i like that <laughs> like that so, and, and you one know thing, how them new zealand guys are they yeah. talk funny one thing i'll <laughs> caution i'll caution you folks some of you uh the newbies out there Look, I was one of these folks that on my, when I first got my Mac in 1986, the first thing I did was change the desktop, was add themes, add customizations, move the trash can, change the look of the trash can and stuff. So basically anybody else that ever uh, had a Mac that went on mine wouldn't know how to use it because everything was all changed around. And I learned throughout life, keep it stock. And I did the same thing to my car. <laughs> But, uh, but that's a whole other story. So my advice to the newbies is, unless it's something you really, really uh, have to have, uh, I, I, I'm against changing all the stock screens or themes or, or this and that. Um, because frankly, something goes wrong and you have to reset it all over again you're going to be completely lost. Or if you're over at somebody's house and they have the stock screen, you'll be lost or vice versa. Yeah. I've, I've always kept mine stock just for simplicity. Sake. <laughs> when you go to help somebody and you're trying to explain to them where this is, that's a good point. And they're like, well, mm -hmm. I can't find it. And then you go, well, what screen set are you using? Oh, well, I'm using blue text or some and I'm like, well, then I can't help you. I don't know where it is. I, you know, I keep the default screen because most people use the default screen at least till they get going and know what they're doing. And it's easier to help, you know, get everybody on the same page. And Jerry, not to start an argument, but yes, my Mac Plus in 1986 did have themes with flying toasters and, and the like and the screensavers. Uh, it, uh, Mac, Mac was always a GUI. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Roger says she used the KISS program. I'm a big uh, oh, same in the here. of engineering and everything else. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've been here right about our regular time, about an hour and 15 minutes. So we're going to sign off of here. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, all you guys tuning in tonight. We've had a, uh, I get this off the screen here. I guess I, I don't know what I'm <laughs> Don't hit that button. I, I know. I'm trying to be <laughs> I don't hit the right, uh, the right button. Um, yes, Laney, you can do that. I will, uh, send you uh, be around right after this. Um, all right. Well, yeah, we've had a good, uh, good little crowd here tonight, hundred and something folks. Um, and I appreciate every one of you. We'll, uh, we're going to get out of here. Uh, thank you, Jim, for coming on and Thanks, talking Dave. about your, uh, your um, photos and your camera mount and all that. And Russ, I appreciate you coming on and representing the, the GW. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, buddy.
Keep up the awesome work. And I may just have to get inspired just, <laughs> just because you're uh, mm. it, keep it inspiring helps. me, buddy, when I see all those uh all those awesome projects you're doing. And then I, I, you know, I have to just do the, the stock stuff or open up another thing to draw 3d. Yeah. So, but yeah, I want to be like you so bad. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Javi, thanks as always for uh, joining us here on the thing. And happy to be here. We are going to sign out. If I can find that magic button. Everybody have an awesome weekend. Behave yourself. Thumbs up. We'll see you next week. Yeah, thumbs up. Way out if you're so inclined. Or thumbs down, either one. Don't matter to me. All right, we'll see you guys. Good night, everybody. Good night.